Valerie Hunt, RunRx, Ask Me Anything. And so today I had a couple of great questions that I'm going to talk about. Uh, my three things that are really going to be important for this conversation. And the first one is understanding muscles in your run. How much muscles are we using? And is it my, which muscle is it? So that's what I want to answer first. The second question I want to answer is how high do I pull my foot, which is actually very close in relation to the first question. And then the third question is, people are still struggling with um, either trying to fall too much or trying to over pull. So I'm gonna talk about kind of a balance. So the first thing I wanna talk about is just your muscles. And one of the things to keep in mind, what do our muscles do? Our muscles only do really one thing. They contract and then they release. They contract, they release. They don't do anything else. So, you know, when we talk about things like stretching, what are we really doing? We're letting the muscle, what, relax, right? And then when we're doing, say, like weight lifting or I'm going to pick something up, then it's a contraction of the muscle. And by the way, when one muscle contracts, the opposing muscle relaxes. So if this is my bicep muscle, then when I lift with my bicep, my tricep is actually relaxed. And which is funny because I've been a trainer for so long and years, years ago, women would be like, I, I hate how my tricep does this. And I'd be like, well, then stand like that. <laughs> Flex it, right? That's what the muscles do. They contract and they release. And when they're not contracted, they're in fact relaxed. And that is so important to understand because if you try to control every movement you do, do you know how tired you would be? I mean, think about it. You get in your car and you're like, triceps, extend. Fingers, grip. Wrist, turn. I mean, you would never make it out of your driveway. You'd be still programming your body like a, you know, like a robot. And so when people talk about muscles, they get lost a little bit because we have 600 muscles and if we try to control all of them, we would be like <laughs> in a state of... We couldn't, we'd be parent, we would be standing here not moving. There would just be too much overload, right? What's really important, by the way, is to understand there's a lot of muscles in the foot. There's just a lot of muscles everywhere. And even right now when you're standing, your whole body's working. It's all working. So just know that. And knowing that is, is a big, by the way, like relief to yourself. Because a lot of people will say to me, uh, I have an injury because my, uh, my glutes weren't firing which is, you know, means nothing. Because honestly, your glutes hold your body upright. So if your glutes are in need of some work, that could be. It's not the reason why you're having issues in your run. And this is important to understand because we are at RunnerX skill, strength, and self-care. So I believe in strength. I do a lot of strength training. I love strength training. However, running is not strength training. And it's so important to understand the difference. So in running, you have this muscle here called the hamstring. And the hamstring, well, for one, it pulls the foot, but it only has to finish the pull, and we only use 10% of our hamstring. It's so hard to know that in the beginning. I Believe me, when I first started running pose, I learned it from a book in 1999. This is how long I've been practicing my pull. And I spent, I kid you not, probably two to three years running like this. Knees bent, pulling. Ham <laughs> Hamstrings on fire. Why? I was actively pulling. What was I missing out of the gait cycle? The gait cycle, pose, fall, pull. So once you're in pose and your body's falling, you literally only break contact with the ground. The hamstring finishes the pull for you. It's this really great relationship. It's the opposite of weightlifting. So for example, if this was um, like, let's pretend I'm a boss, like 50 pound weight, and I was like, I'm only gonna go to right here. Well, my bicep, there's no way that it could do the rest of the work by itself. It wouldn't make any sense. It couldn't, it's, it's overloaded. So once I put load here and loaded the tension here, then I am actively doing the work. This is me. Full range of motion all the way through. It's a terrible bicep curl, sorry. But in running, we don't worry about things like that because as soon as we have pulled our foot here, 
we're done. So we literally pull here, and then our hamstring goes pink, because the hamstring does that. It's a, called a reflexive response. If we go to the doctor and they do this, right, or they test your knee, they see how far it'll come out. It's not you kicking the doctor, it's just a reflexive response. The hamstring has one too, which kicks in when you fall. So you fall, you pull, hamstring finishes the pull. So in running, it's just very hard to practice this way. You're literally like, think about how weird that would be, <laughs> right? To practice like that. So some of this you just have to, uh, it's, a, it's a concept, it's a theory, it's understanding. It's understanding movement. And once you let go of, I need to control all of my movement, whew, man, I tell you, then I can really practice and focus more on running. <laughs> if I'm spending my entire run trying to control where's my foot, how am I putting it down? How high do I pull? I'm not having fun anymore, right? I mean, running should be like free. It's free falling. So running itself is simply like, wee, and then the pull is actually a natural response. So this is what's so cool. You know, there's every, a lot of talk like natural running is a big thing. People say we're all born to run. <laughs> um, some of us are, and some of us are in uh, running, have to work on our movement like Valerie. So by the way, I went from sitting in a chair running, pulling, trying to be like, whoo man, this running is tiring, to once I understood, let go, Valerie, let go of movement, let go and let your body show you what it can do, and understand that we are using gravity and it's a free fall. I'm telling you, it is a mind blow. <laughs> and to understand something, people that are, say, natural talent, which we see, right, I mean, the Olympics, the elite runners in the marathon, the, the person you know that just when you watch them run, you're like, man, they're smooth, right? We all see and have seen really nice running techniques. And sometimes we think, oh man, I wish I could do that, or I'm trying to do that, but what are we really trying to do because we don't know what they're doing? So once you realize their skill, their talent, you you may never run as fast as them or as long as them, whatever, that's on them and whatever your goals are. You can then harness the same amount of gravity and free fall. It's in your mind, it's just you allowing. And then the foot will pull. So you practice what? You practice standing in the pose and you practice falling and you practice pulling. But in place, it's like weightlifting because I'm doing the pulling in place. I'm feeling what is pulling, right? Then I have to feel what is elasticity. Then I have to put it together. So we've got, by the way, a free 30-day uh, on our YouTube channel, Run RX. A free 30-day, it's called, uh, I think called it Reboot. And it's just a daily little thing of skill, strength, and self-care. What's self-care? Stretching, ankle openers. You know, all of the things you do in PT are to help you be able to come over here and do this, right? So then, let's say, let's say you were standing, we were together, I'll face you for a minute, and I said, hey, I just need you to stand and pose, and this was you, right? And then every time you run, you finish your run, you'd say, I mean, man, my hip really hurts when I run. And I'd be like, well, let me see your pose. You understand? First step is let's correct your pose. And let's say I kept trying to get you to do this, and this kept happening. Well, then maybe we'd go see the PT and figure out what's going on. But honestly, most people, once they realize that they just have not been practicing standing in their running pose, and in running, a mile is anywhere from 1,500 to 1,700 steps a mile for all of us. So 1,500 steps like this. <laughs> my hip would hurt too. 1,500 steps with my hip stable, pulling one foot up from the ground. No concern with what the other one does because you pull, what does the lifted foot do? It drops. What drops your lifted foot? Gravity. Can you be faster than gravity? No, so don't worry about it. Instead of thinking, where's the ground? When you sense the ground, pull. Like if you were, say, jumping rope. If you're jumping rope right now, you would wait to feel or hear, however you do it, the rope hit, and then you would pull. So why not in running do we not do the same thing? See, once you start to think it, much nicer on the joints. 50% reduction on the joints. Um, do you have knowledge of numbers 
regarding vertical oscillation. <laughs> uh, minimize. We want minimal vertical oscillation. So now this is like kind of the fun, I guess, of having a Garmin watch. It gives you all this information. Whatever your vertical oscillation is, I would not worry about. I would worry more, am I trying to fall? Because see, this is important. And we're all gonna have some vertical oscillation. Why? Well, because gravity pulls us down. So the reality is that every time you touch on the ground, you're down on the ground. <laughs> There's a down. And then we wanna fall forward and pull our foot up. So we're always redirecting our body weight. So if you have a lot of vertical oscillation, there's too much up and down, right? That means you're pushing off your back leg. If there's vertical oscillation in your run, you are jumping. By the way, I don't know where it is anymore, but back to back, back in the day, there was a guy, uh, he's still around, Ryan Hall, and he was estimated to have done like so much vertical oscillation that he ran like three extra miles in his marathon. Does that make sense? Spent too much time going up and down. Lots of runners do this. And by the way, he was really fast. So what's interesting is you can adapt, right, to some of these things. So if I'm using, like, trying to do data measurement, minimize vertical oscillation. Why? Because I want to know that my body weight is traveling forward. <laughs> you see? If my body weight's traveling forward, there's going to be minimal vertical oscillation with my knee bent versus me doing any kind of pushing. Of course, when I heard that data, by the way, I think this was like, gosh, I heard it over 10 years ago. I remember thinking, well, if he's an elite marathoner and he had that much room, I bet I ran like a 35 mile marathon <laughs> when I was back in my day pushing. <laughs> by the way, that's how we're all taught. Where there's this belief that if we take our foot and for some reason we push into the ground, that it's going to let us kind of travel more. And you know, that works in jumping. And, and, and if I'm trying to actually like, again, I do this a lot, but if I was gonna try to jump up, doesn't it make sense, we all do this. If I'm gonna jump up, we go down and up, right? And then boy, whoo, <laughs> you go right back down. So in running, it makes no sense to do that. In place, there's vertical oscillation because I'm in place, right? As soon as you start to travel, the oscillation should minimize. So if you see I have a lot of it, then I would focus just first on my knee bent, but also am I falling, right? So the, you know, it's gonna be individual, obviously, based on speed of the runner, height of the runner, right? <laughs> Distance of the run, but the reality is can you minimize that vertical oscillation? How? Keep the knees bent and fall pull. So it goes back to this. First, really get in contact with what's the gait cycle. Because unless I understand what it is I'm looking at, it doesn't make sense. The same with heart rate. So someone asked a question also on heart rate. My heart rate goes up when I practice the fall pull. Let me tell you why, two reasons. One is most of you guys have been running with active muscle contraction, like the bicep curl. You've been putting like a 30 pound weight on your feet and you've been either pushing or reaching, and that's very exertive. But it's more exertive like a musculoskeletal exertive. The muscles are fatigued, you're hitting, you're pushing, you're making them work when they're not really needing to work. So basically you're overworking your body. What muscle though is really not getting that challenge? The heart, why? Because if my muscular, it's the same like, um, you know, if I'm just, I don't know, I'm not gonna say it right. Let's just go back to this. If I take out unnecessary muscular movements, meaning I quit pumping my arms and I quit kicking and I just start to remove those, right? If I'm running and I'm doing all of this, right? I'm not really running, I'm just really moving my body, my arms and my legs. I'll probably, you know, get a little sweat and move around. But I'm gonna get fatigued in my muscle before I even travel anywhere. So a lot of you guys that are running are just doing a lot of movement. It's not so much traveling. So when I switch all of a sudden to where I'm taking that extra workout and all of a sudden I start to fall and pull, two things happen. One, my heart rate shoots up because I'm now using my cardiovascular system to run. And second, 
it's a bit startling because if I've never fallen before, to simply let your body fall and go, fear. What do most of us feel when we fall? Stop falling. <laughs> it's a natural response. So the heart rate does shoot up and you generally are gonna fall and run faster than you were running before. And also there's not as much movement. So when I take that away from people, they're like, what do I do with my arms? <laughs> right? Uh, letting the muscles work on their own takes some work too, by the way, because we're so used to like working and all of this movement and all of a sudden she's like, no, 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 stop moving so much. Flow, right? Smooth runners. It's like what we want to talk about. Honestly, think about, and we'll go with the high elite people. When they're running, they can't control their muscles. They're running. They might be thinking of their pace or keeping up. You know, if you're in the front, you've got people in front of you. <clears throat> they're thinking, how can I unweigh my feet? Maybe not in those words, but they are holding on. And same with sprinters. They're, I mean, their they're, cadence is like 250 plus. They don't have time to think, they have time to respond. We, because most of us as age group recreational runners, we spend way too much time on the ground and too much time here. So there's no time if I think and start thinking, fall, and you are simply pulling to keep up. I promise you this though, the heart rate does go down and you'll actually be 10% more efficient at any speed if you'll stick with it. So maybe in the beginning, because most of you guys start falling and you panic, and you either do this or you do this. So the first step is really just practicing the free fall itself, which is kind of fun, I think, I think it's fun. It's very small, just taking your body weight forward and then realizing that we can't see it, but our foot only pulls here. But what you see is the hamstring finishing the pull, so then we think we're supposed to do all of this work. <laughs> Take some of that out. Okay, one more question and I'll let it go. Um, okay, so last question was, well, I had already said how high I pull the foot like this. This is it. So the last question was my calves. So this happens a lot, especially when you very first start, and most of you it's because of this. One, over pulling, so of what I used to do, and so remember whoever asked about vertical oscillation, if your calves are hurting or you're feeling bouncy, that's vertical oscillation because if I try to do all of the work, I'm going to use a lot of extra muscle, I'm gonna use calves, not just the hamstring, I'll be more bouncy, so my calves are gonna get tired. And second, that's really the, the most important, you're not falling. So really make sure you practice what does it feel like to do this, fall, pull. And the more you do that, you see, there's no bounce. There's no bounce, I just went forward instead of up, right? So let go of anything else. There's no landing, I'm not looking for the ground. So that's the other one. If your foot's hurting here in the front, that's because you're like, I'm thinking I'm gonna land on the ball of my foot. So then you do this, landing, 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 landing. See, you put your foot down. Don't put your foot down. Fall and pull. And it's already there for you. So have some fun with it. Like I said, we've got the 30 day practice in the YouTube. Uh, we also would love to have you in our membership. We do a 12 week, really intensive. You come in, we do gait analysis, we do video check-ins. I take you through the practice, you show me your practice, we communicate, it's really great. Um, great way to make sure, not just, you don't have to be injured. It's all about prevention, that's the biggest thing. And then if you are injured, it's about recovery and making sure that injury doesn't come back. So one of the things to keep in mind is there's so much out there. And, and people always are coming to me with um, more and more questions, which I love, and I'm like, keep it really simple. We don't have to worry about all of these 600 muscles or anything else. We just have to relax and let Mother Nature kind of take us through our run. I promise it's a lot more fun. And uh, you can ask me all the questions you want. Keep them coming. You can comment here. Uh, you can comment on the YouTube even. Uh, but most of all, please keep yourself open to try because it is a lot of fun uh, to free fall in your run. All right, guys, have a great day, and I'll see you next Wednesday. Thank you so much.